hello everybody. I haven't made these uh, record updates in six months, so it's high time I make one. And let's start with this one. This is uh, Linda Ronstadt, walking on air 1974, two live radio concerts from 1974. And look how her name is spelled. That should have told me something. Uh, song selection and playing wise, it's, uh, it's excellent. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that uh, a few times during those uh, CDs, there is this thing where when it, sometimes when you listen to radio, you can hear how the station goes uh, just slightly off. You can hear sort of this uh, sort of a static sound around music. That's what happens on that uh, CD a, a few times. Uh, not too much, but enough to really annoy me. So when I saw Ben show this Linda Ronstadt, Sausalito 1973, I went and get this one. Again, song selection and playing wise, excellent album. Uh, unfortunately, here is the thing that uh, there is some kind of a misunderstanding between Linda and the broadcaster because uh, there's uh, twice, I think, uh, during this record that uh, Linda uh, takes a break between songs where she thinks that there is a, a commercial break. She even asked at one point uh, that is there a commercial break now and she she's being told that no there's no no commercial break that it's all uh, live and even though that is in, uh, in the actual broadcast for this record they should have cut those bits off from this album which I find to be kind of annoying okay uh, Richie Blackmore's Rainbow surprisingly came here this spring I went to see him and I bought uh, Blackmore's Night their first album Shadow of the Moon Really good stuff if you know what kind of a music this is. And this uh, second album, uh, I knew about this album, but I had completely forgotten it, it existed until I saw somebody post this in uh, Facebook. And this is just drummer and Mescalero's Streetcore uh, from 2001. Uh, uh, this album was finished after the death of Joe Strummer. And this one includes seven bonus tracks which were recorded live. Uh, uh, those uh, live tracks include uh, Mick Jones as a, from the uh, Clash as a uh, so, uh, special guest. Uh, slightly similar self-titled album from uh, Bad Finger. Uh, I always knew about this album and I did see this uh, over the decades uh, every now and then. But for some reason I had this misunderstanding that these were recordings done after the uh, original breakup of the band. Uh, but uh, some time ago, I, just by coincidence, I happened to find out that this was actually their second to last album. So after uh, I found out about it, I found this from the eBay, bought it, and it went missing. Uh, it was missing for several weeks uh, and I already had a refund from the seller until it finally arrived and I paid the seller back the money that he had already paid me back. Okay, another artist that uh, I have been thinking for thinking about uh, at least 15 years, but just never got around buying anything. And now I went to the record store specifically to buy this album. This is Jet Atkins, Teens Wheel. This is two albums on one CD and here's the second album stringing along with Jet Atkins. Really great finger-picking finger uh, country music. Uh, another country music artist that is a secret among the members of the VC. And that doesn't mean that the, the members does not know him, know about him, just that they won't talk about him to me. And by this I mean that I have asked at least LJ, Harmless Rebel and Billy Hurst. Uh, I have wanted them to recommend me uh, his albums from the 70s, but none of them have replied anything at all to me. So uh, I saw at least LJ and Billy Hurst that they had this album and they said that it was good. And even though it's not from the 70s, I decided to go ahead and buy it. This is Merle Haggard, Big City. And this is Big City and it also includes Going Where the Lonely Go. So yeah, still uh, wanted to hear recommendations for Mer Haggard from the 70s. Okay, this next one uh, was uh, sort of a mistake. I mean, uh, 
I love the Water Boys album Fisherman's Blues, so when I saw that there was a six CD box set, Fisherman's Box, being released, and this was uh, was this 25 or 26 euros, I jumped on it. But six CDs, even though this material is excellent, six CDs is just an overkill to me. It, it's just too much for me. Okay, then uh, let's move on to the uh, Vinyl, this is a Concrete Blonde, uh, still in Hollywood, double album compilation. Finally, after months of waiting, they finally issued this one on vinyl. And this was the last month that I was missing, so now I have all of their albums on vinyl. Uh, Bahman Turner, Overdrive, Four Wheel Drive. Uh, I don't remember who it was that showed this one. It might have been uh, Blackmore Rules uh, showed this one. Uh, so I had been thinking about this band for a very, very long time. So I finally went and bought this one and I was very pleasantly surprised. This is much more uh, heavier. I, I, I don't mean that there's anything at all to do with the metal, but this was much more heavier album, uh, a hard rocking album that I was expecting. So if you have more recommendations for Black Bahman Turner Overdrive, let me know. Okay, this one came through the conversation I had with uh, James Griffiths uh, concerning his video about Tom Petty's uh, Full Moon Fever. And we talked about the solo albums from uh, Traveling Wilburys. And I had all of the other solo albums from around the time of the release of uh, Traveling Wilburys, except for Jeff Lynne. Because uh, at the time Jeff Lynne meant uh, only one thing to me at the time, and that was ELO. Uh, didn't like yellow. So now uh, James Griffiths recommended to me this Jeff Lynn Arm Chair Theater, and you can clearly hear that this is a part of the uh, Traveling Wilburys family. Uh, it's uh, stylistically, it's a very similar sounding album, uh, but out of the, all of these uh, solo albums from around this time, uh, I like this the least. Uh, I mean, it, it's okay, but yeah, I like this one the least. And then this is uh, Golden Smog, Weird Tales. I've had this one on CD since uh, it was released in 1998. And this one is on Green Vinyl. Let's show the uh, custom label for for a change. And it's one. It's on Green Vinyl. And this uh, band is a a side project for the uh, members of uh, Jayhawks, Soul Asylum, and Wilco. Uh, really, really good, excellent, excellent stuff. And I also found their first album down by the old mainstream. Uh, and I think it was for this album. Uh, now, if there is some of you who, who think that, they, uh, that you are a really good at finding rare albums, here's one for you. When they released this album, uh, they sent a promo pack uh, to the British music press. And in that promo pack, they uh, were selling this album, saying, hey, we have a new great album. But also, they were telling that, hey, we also have this other album. Just don't forget that one. Don't forget that album. I mean, here's a great album, but we have this other album too. And that one is a true rarity. And in fact, it is such a rare album that it never existed. <laughs> yeah, even it never existed. It was just a, uh, some kind of a in in joke for the band. Uh, but there you go. Try and find that one. Uh, Richard and Linda Thompson, Hokey Pokey, excellent, excellent album. I've had this one on CD for ages. Love this album. Absolutely fantastic British folk rock. I still need a uh, port town like port town like silver. Excellent, excellent stuff. An album I never thought I would buy. I've had uh, this sort of in my mind for over 30 years. This is uh, "Flogging a Dead Horse" by Sex Pistols. Uh, I never thought I would buy this simply because uh, I have all of these songs, so I didn't really have any need for this. But uh, well, I just happened to come across this on. 
on a perfect day and uh, I found it with this this label so why not and another one that was surprisingly difficult this is my favorite album from Faith No More Angel Dust and what made this difficult is that the, there was three different pressings made for this album uh, roughly around the same time a couple of years ago and what I wanted was a pressing that would include let's see if you can see, see this this is a, I wanted to it include Chislober, Midnight Cowboy and Easy and as you can see there's no mention of Easy but it is mentioned here on this sticker so it's sort of like a, a bonus hidden bonus track but yeah it took me a long time to find this one but I finally finally did and again uh, back to James Griffiths he made a video about the solo albums from George Harrison and that video recommend, uh, confirmed what I had already suspected and uh, I don't really have uh, a lot of trust for the quality of George Harrison's solo albums with the exception of his first two albums and Cloud Nine uh, outside of those I only have his self-titled album but I, I knew that I wanted to get one more and based on uh, James Griffith's video I bought 33 and third and in my opinion this is uh, basically same level as uh, his self-titled album good album but uh, no veneer uh, on a par with the the other three albums that I mentioned and uh, I really don't think that I'm going to buy any more albums from George Harrison except for the live in Japan uh, that one I still do want okay the third album from the Secret Sisters you don't own me anymore uh, yeah, continues in the vein of their second album, Put Your Needle Down. Uh, if you like that one, you will like this one. Uh, very similar vein. Wonderful, wonderful vocal harmonies. Uh, there's been some time uh, that U2 albums have been uh, reissued on vinyl. And now they released two albums. There's Pop. I heard this album uh, around about the time that this was originally released uh, in 96 and from what I could remember I, I didn't think too highly and yeah I was right uh, it's, it's not a great album uh, it's not bad album but yeah it, it's not a great album but this other one is this is uh, all that you can leave behind from 2000 this is a great great YouTube album uh, I think it's my third favorite uh, YouTube album so yeah, there's uh, more more of the albums are being reissued. The latest one that I saw that uh, is coming up is their compilation, uh, Best of 1980-1990. Uh, okay, this next one was also surprising because I had one of his albums and I was not crazy about it. I thought it was okay, but uh, really wasn't crazy about it. But for some reason when I saw this one, I just jumped on it. I mean, I have seen this one over the years several times, but yeah. Well, this time it was the right time. John Hyatt, Slow Turning. And this one is great. I, I think this is, this is a great album. A great mixture of uh, singer-songwriter, uh, Americana, blues, um, maybe even a little bit of a country somewhere in the background. Uh, but yeah, I would, mostly I would just say that this is a mixture of uh, Americana and a singer-songwriter. Great, great album. Really, really good stuff. And because of that, and also by a compilation, double album collected, and this one uh, includes uh, songs from his album between 1982 and 1995. And Brinsley Swars, Nervous on the Road, brilliant pub rock from uh, UK, uh, early to mid 70s. Uh, this is just brilliant, brilliant stuff. Um, yeah, I've loved this al album a long time and this one includes my favorite track from them, Surrender to the Rhythm. I really, really recommend you to have a listen to that song from the YouTube. And let's end this one with one CD and I will tell you a little story connected with this one. This is Keith Richards, Mania Fender, his second solo album from 1992, my third uh, Keith Richards solo album. Uh, 
uh, I like this one. It, it's a good solo album from Keith, uh, but uh, overall I much prefer both uh, Mick Jagger and especially Ronnie Wood's solo albums. But yeah, uh, a little story connected with this one. Uh, I will tell you a story as if it would have happened to me, which obviously it did not happen to me. Uh, so I was in rehab and I met and befriended Ivan Neville. And we became friends uh, through playing mu music together because we found out that we both liked similar music and we both could teach each other uh, stuff from uh, stuff outside of what each, each of us knew. So we could connect through music. And we found out that playing music together helped us to stay sober. Well, time went on and I knew that he was uh, working on Keith Richards' solo album. And one day he came over to me and we uh, had a jam session together and he told me that Keith Richards wanted to talk to me. And I thought that, okay, he's just joking, he's trying to play some kind of a joke on me. But he, he insisted that he was serious, that Keith Richards really wanted to talk to me, that he had told, uh, Ivan had told about me to Keith Richards. So he gave me uh, his manager's phone number and told me to call him tomorrow. So, okay, I was really thinking that, okay, this is some kind of a joke, but next day I gathered up my courage and called the number and it was Keith Richards' manager. And I explained to her uh, what I was, uh, who I got the number from uh, and that uh, Ivan had told me that Keith would like to speak to me. And to my surprise, she said that, hold on for a moment, uh, she will go up and go and pick up Keith to the phone. And after a moment, it was Keith. And I was ecstatic. I was thinking, I'm gonna get me jamming with Keith Richards. I'm going to be doing the best cocaine in the world with Keith Richards. I'm going to be drinking with Keith Richards. This is going to be great. And then Keith said, yeah, Ivan told me about you and I wanted to thank you for keeping him sober. Sober. This means I'm not going to be doing drugs with Keith Richards. I'm not going to be drinking with Keith Richards. Okay. And Keith continued saying that, yeah, I wanted to thank you for keeping him sober because when he was on drugs and drinks, he was highly unreliable. We could never trust him to show up on time or even at all. So I wanted to thank you. Thanks and goodbye. That was it. Yeah, did not get to meet Keith Richards. Okay, <laughs> thanks for watching. Uh, I will try to film another video as soon as possible, even today, if if that is in uh, if that is possible in any anyway. Yeah, thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Bye.